back everybody, it's your girl Jazz, and today I will be reviewing the Vitagene. Sounds exciting, right? You're like, what in the world? Why? You could be unique, like you, or me. Wouldn't that make sense? Thing? Okay, sorry, just saying it out loud. <laughs> also, before I forget, thank you for the newbies that are watching. I appreciate your time. All you gotta do is subscribe. That way you can welcome, I can welcome you back next time. <laughs> Just kidding. So, Vitagene, what is that? It is another DNA test to find out who the daddy is. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Sorry, when I hear DNA test, I automatically think paternity. So, I don't have any kids, so I don't have to worry about that anyways. So, I decided to do another DNA test. And first of all, let's see what's included. Some little vial which I don't know what that is. We will find out in just a minute. Okay, two little vials. The instructions, which I'm pretty sure I will need. Ooh. All right. And a kit to find out where they are going. All right. And then two little, or little, <laughs> giant cotton ball swabs, thingies. They are What's Man Omni Swabs. The first one. All right, so I'm actually going to go ahead and open up this one because after I swab my cheek. I will need to dispose of it in there. As soon as I can open this. And you need to swab the cheek on the inside. And I'll go over a little bit more details too in a minute of this specific DNA test. What's the, kind of what the difference is between this one and my, um, it wasn't Ancestry, which one was it? Oh, 23 and me. Ah! I will be doing this um, Ancestry soon though. So, and kind of so that way to give everybody an idea of what each test consists of. This one's a little bit different and that's part of the reason why I wanted to do it because I know that there's pretty sure there are tons of them out there. But 23andMe and Ancestry are the top two. This one does as a different aspect to it. So that's the reason why I wanted to do it. But like I said, I'll get into that in just a minute. First of all, we got to send it in. So what do we need to do to send it in? We got to swab our cheeks for 60 seconds on a left cheek, left cheek. Oh, what is their difference? The inside of your left cheek, repeat on the right side, so it really doesn't matter. All right. Alexa, set an alarm for 60 seconds. One minute, starting now. Thank you. All right. Side of my cheek is pretty soft now. I actually need to get it. <laughs> All right, so I scrubbed the inside of my cheek. Now I am dumping it off into here. And released the little end of it. Now I will be sealing it up. And just so you know, I probably didn't make it clear. I'm supposed to do 60 seconds on one side, dump it in, take the other side for 60 seconds, and dump it in. It's not 60 seconds on each side, or um, 60 seconds on one side, and then 60 seconds, or 30 seconds, 30 seconds. You know, you know what I mean. Or do you? So, just to be clear, 60 seconds on one side, put it in one of the tubes. Six seconds on the other side, which I'm about to do. All right. Alexa, set an alarm for one minute. All right. Dump it back in. Oh, I think I did that side harder. Ouch. Got to close it up. Make sure it's nice and tight. And we got to shake it up. All right. So that's done. Now we're going to place both of the vials inside the bag. Then we're going to seal them and mail it off. Then I should get my results back in a year and a half. No, I'm joking. It's supposed to be about four to six weeks. 
And luckily this time there's no holidays involved. At least no major ones, so hopefully it'll get back just as quick. So, and they're located in... Hmm, where are they? Oh, I'm shipping it to Houston. Okay. So the reason I chose this one is because if you don't already know, first of all, shame on you. I'm just kidding. I am in the process of trying to get in shape and, you know, get healthy and everything like that. Fortunately, I don't have any health issues, but, you know, if I keep going down this path, I know it can easily change. One thing that I did not mention that I should have. You're not supposed to eat, drink, smoke, or chew gum within 30 minutes before collecting my, uh, my, <laughs> your DNA. But like I said, the one thing, the one reason why I chose this one is because it also does, actually, you know what, let me double check, make sure I'm giving the appropriate information. I found this deal on Groupon. I love Groupon, I really do. Helps you save a lot of money. And it gets you a lot of trial and error stuff, too. So this particular one, it does for your diet, your exercise, and your ancestry report. What exactly does that entail? The ancestry report is a detailed tool that provides a detailed ethnic and geography breakdown of where your ancestries came from. The diet report is a feature that helps you understand which types of food and diet choices are right for your DNA, further personalized health, uh, based on your health goals such as weight loss, reducing stress, increasing energy, et cetera, et cetera. Huh, they covered two of me. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't really have too much stress, luckily. So, yeah, two out of three. Not bad. And as far as exercise, it's an advanced feature that enables you to understand what types of exercise are most likely to be effective for your DNA type. And also a supplementation report. A complete personalized look into which vitamins, minerals, and herbs are most closely suited for your DNA and lifestyle in which and in which dosages. So that's part of the reason why I really wanted to do this one. And again, to kind of compare Ancestry, 23andMe, and as well as Phytogene to see what the differences are. So now I shall go ship this off and just kind of sit here and wait. <sighs> junk mail, junk mail, junk mail. Amazon orders been placed. Junk. It's back. It's finally back. It only took what two months? It's back. Sorry, I'm a little too excited. The Vitagen order is finally back. Yes. Okay. Now I can really start. You know, kind of get my mentality right for my. You know, well, let's see what the results say before I, you know, commit to anything. Hold on. All right, so uh, let's see. We've got the raw DNA download, my genetic traits, my diet, my exercise, my supplements, and my ancestry. So where should we start? All right, so we're going to go ahead and look into the raw DNA and see how that works. Loading. Oh, we got to download it first. <sighs> download. Oh, your DNA has been downloaded. Wait, hold on, wait. What's going on? This might be a minute. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see, see, let's see. While it's downloading, I'm gonna let it download for a minute and give a little bit of price comparison on the DNA kits. So I did the DNA through 23andMe. If you haven't seen that one at the end of this video, go check that one out. Um, so that way you can kind of compare um, these two. I also did Ancestry as well and sent that off probably like a week after um, I sent this one off and it's still not here. They just opened it. They just opened my package like a week ago and they've had it for over a month. Anyways, that's another video. Um, so the price for the Vitagen for the, well, first of all, let me start out. If you want just the DNA report, Actually, no, they don't. I'm sorry. Correction. If you've already done your tw your um, DNA report with, you know, Ancestry or 23andMe, you can actually just download it to their, to the Vitagen 
and pay $50 and get your health report that way um, to save a little bit of money if you've already spent it you know, with another site. Or you could do like me and just start up from complete scratch. Um, however, and again, if you do want to do the, you know, from beginning to end, the DNA and everything like that, that report is $100 right now, which really is not that bad because I believe, uh, let me see, 23andMe, if you want the health and the ancestry report, that's $200. Sorry, that's way out of my price range. I'm glad I found Vitagen. So, with that being said, let me go back to see how the download report's going. Oh, it's opening. Why is my computer not working with me? Probably because I'm in a rush. I'm excited to see what this says. Um. Okay, it's telling me about my chromosomes and a little bit of this. And, um, honestly, it looks like a two-year-old just ran across the keyboard and started typing stuff. Okay, so obviously I'm not a rocket scientist and I cannot distinguish anything this says, so we're going to forget the raw data. Go back. And we're going to look at the genetics. Man, sorry. Did I do that one right? No, let's start with the ancestry. See how that one breaks it down first. So apparently, I am 56.77 European according to the Vitagen report. 36.63% is West and Central European, which is primarily located France, Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, blah, blah, blah. A nice long list, as you can see. Let's get a little bit more details about that. All right, as you can see from the map, I'm a little bit from everywhere, apparently. <laughs> uh, let's see. I am 13.41% Southeast European, which consists of a whole long list of countries that are prominently located there. Italy, Bosnia, Greece, Montenegro, Slovenia, Albania, Croatia, and some other place I can't really pronounce. Macadamia or something like that. Okay, now I'm getting tired to call some white chocolate macadamia nut cookies. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. And British Isles, I am 3.74%, which includes England, Ireland, Scotland. So I'm a bit Scottish. Okay, so I really don't know my British and Scottish accent. <laughs> Sorry if I offended anyone. Um... But it's part of my heritage, so it, it should be okay. At least that's what is according to this. And I, according to this one, I think is pretty interesting. I am 2.99% Iberia. Interesting. Yeah, don't worry. I plan on comparing all three um, of my DNA tests together so you kind of get an idea of what each one includes and, you know, all the popularity you know, which one is, are you more targeted towards? Um, Iberia includes Spain and Portugal as well. Now I am 23.69% American. Actually, I'm 100% American. Okay, now, not according to that. <laughs> um, North and Central American is 23.41%, which includes Canada, United States, Mexico, Nicaragua, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, and Cuba. I'm going to go visit Cuba one day. That is my goal. And I am less than 1% South American. Um, it says low confidence region, which I'm not sure what that is. Let me see what the plus arrow shows. Okay, with that, that includes the Caribbean islands, Chile, Brazil, Panama, Costa Rica, Peru, Ecuador. I don't know what that one is. Suriname? That is confusing. How is... North and Central America, I'm, I'm, is classified under uh, Mexico, Nicaragua, Belize, but it's also listed in South America. You can only be part of one America. That's just confusing to me. But okay, whatever. 
According to this, I am 9.42% African, which includes West Africa at 4.85%, primarily located in Mali. I do not know my African countries at all. So if I butcher any of this, I'm sorry, nothing personal. I've just never heard of them. Okay, now let's go back to this. Um, Ni Niger, the Republic of Conga, uh, Guinea. Okay, I'm just going to let that list there because I don't want to feel like, you know, I'm my brain's not fully functioning. Um, and I can't pronounce half of these things, and I've never heard of it. Nigeria. Oh, Dominican of D DR, my guess is Dominican Republic of the Conga. Central Africa Republic, and some other stuff. And then I am 2.44% North African, which includes uh, Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia, I guess how you pronounce it. Oh, I'm all over Africa, ain't I? And East Central African, which is 2.13% of Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, the DR of Conga, South Sudan. Why is it being separated? Is there two different countries? One Sudan, one South Sudan? Okay, I need to learn some geography. I think I might do that before I do my last one. <laughs> At least that way I won't have to have uh, my lovely followers or subscribers educate me on some of this stuff. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, let's see. And then I, oh, that was East, East Central Africa, which I've already listed. Uh, oh, Tanzania. That's pretty cool. Rwanda. Still, I got, I don't know what that was. Okay, never mind. Anyways, and I am Middle Eastern. I get that a lot. <laughs> Which that includes, oh, well, that makes perfect sense then. <laughs> All right, 4.49% West Middle Eastern, at, which includes Jordan, Israel, Egypt, and Lebanon. I really want to go to some of those places. I really got to visit my culture. And now I have a reason to. Oh, that makes sense. All right, and then East, Middle East. That's just confusing. West, Middle East, and then East, Middle East. And I guess you divide it. Well, go figure. Which, the East, Middle East, which is 2.81%, is Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Iran, Bahrain, I guess how you pronounce it, Iraq, United Arab Emirates. Now, I really have a reason to travel over there. And I am Asian. That makes sense why I like my Chinese food, my Asian food. I might have some for dinner tonight. Okay. I will have some. <laughs> so, South Central Asia is what I am. 1.9%, uh, which is located in South India and Sri Lanka. Interesting. All right, so then less than 1% of Southeast Asian, which is uh, Southeast China. I didn't know China was divided up like that. So it's Southeast China. And you can see the rest because I cannot pronounce a lot of those. Um, I do see Taiwan, Vietnam, the Philippines, Cambodia, Malaysian, or the Malaysian Peninsula. So those are some of the other ones. And then less than 1% of Northeast Asian, which includes China as a whole, so that would divide up, South Korea, Mongolia, Siberia, Japan, some other place I cannot, but that I'm about to butcher the name, Kazakhstan, 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 that sounds familiar, but I don't think, I didn't ever do how it's spelled, but I guess that's how you pronounce it, and North Korea. So, I am from just about everywhere, it seems like. Except for the cold places, which would make sense because I don't really like the cold. <laughs> Alright, so we looked at the Ancestry Report. Now we're going to go back. 
and we're going to look at the genetic traits to see what that says. Doop, doop, doop. Oh, it tells me about my alcohol metabolism. It says your body may metabolize alcohol normally. So I am normal in one aspect. Yes! I told you I was normal. Okay, that kind of probably just proved that I wasn't normal. <laughs> All right, alcohol metabolism is determined by both genetic and environmental factors. Genetic factors influence an estimated 50% of the differences in alcohol consumption and metabolizing and metabolism among individuals. Why am I getting so tongue tied? Most people ages 18 or older have consumed alcohol at some point in their life. Well, considering the fact that I'm over 18, I've heard that for, and if I wasn't, over 18, I probably wouldn't admit to any of this. Anyways, just saying. <laughs> so let's see. 80% uh, of order have consumed alcohol at some point in their life. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I had to wait till I was 21. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. While 27% of adults record, 27% uh, of adults report occasional binge drinking. I'm never, I'm not going to confirm nor deny any of this information. That's all I'm saying. Alcohol consumption can impa impact your entire body, including your brain, heart, and inflammation response. So light to moderate consumption is advised regardless of your genetic results. All right, sodium intake and blood pressure. A low sodium diet is less likely to, well, hold on. Oh, these are my results. Okay, a low sodium diet is less likely to improve your blood pressure compared to others. Hmm. So maybe I need to have some, maybe I need to get rid of the salt shaker. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Hypertension or blood, blood, So hypertension or high blood pressure is influenced by multiple lifestyle factors such as dietary salt intake, alcohol consumption, and body weight. However, 30 to 60% of the risk of developing high blood pressure is based off your genetics. Up to 50% of people diagnosed with hypertension are salt sensitive. So does that mean I am? Hmm. So, I guess I'm going to stay away from the salt. That doesn't make me happy. All right. So, my caffeine metabolism. You may metabolize caffeine faster compared to others. Maybe that's the reason why I can chug a cup of coffee and fall asleep about two seconds later. That would make complete sense to me. Caffeine is the most widely consumed substance in the world with nearly 90% of us 90% of us, 90% <laughs> of U.S. adults consuming caffeine in the form of coffee, tea, or other caffeinated products. Genetics may influence a variety of individuals' response. All right. Individuals who have faster caffeine metabolism may experience fewer side effects, such as jitters, increased heart rate, and anxiety. That's good to know. Individuals with slower caffeine metabolism, however, may experience more adverse side effects including a longer lasting spike in blood pressure. Yes, I avoided that one. Researchers has found that, excuse me, researchers have found that caffeine related traits are, 50, are 36 to 58% determined by genetics. And let's see, there are also several other factors contributing, um, such as, uh, Demographic and environmental factors such as age and other drug use. What's that word? Cir circadian? I don't know. Something factors and sleep hygiene. I'm sorry, guys. I cannot read today. <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to my carbs metabolism. I may skip that one. <laughs> 
don't want to read that one. This one's kind of diff well, I don't know yet. Let's see. You may metabolize carbohydrates. I'm gonna let you guess on this one. Am I slower? Am I normal or am I faster? What you think? Any response? Okay, I don't see no comments yet. So I'm just gonna see her wait. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know y'all can fast forward that two seconds anyways. And the US, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just skipped over that one, didn't I? <laughs> I absorb or I uh, metabolize them slower compared to others. Wonder what that means. We'll find out. In the US, 45 to 70% of energy comes from food, comes from carbs. That's the reason I love my bread and my pasta and my other good junk food. Increased carbohydrate consumption has been found to significantly contribute to chronic diseases such as obesity and type 2 diabetes. You know what? I don't like this, this part of this. I, I think this is wrong. I demand a retest on this one. I think it's wrong. Refined carbohydrates have a high glyce glycemic index and can cause unwanted spikes in blood sugar. Complex carbs, on the other hand, provide vitamins, minerals, and fiber that are beneficial to the health of an individual. Research has shown that people metabolizing car uh, carbs differently and, these, and that these differences are partially influenced by genetics ranging from 32 to 65%. However, lifestyle also plays a crucial role in carb metabolism. Exercise, adequate sleep, and stress management may possibly affect your carbohydrate metabolism. So I'm guessing that's not a good thing. <laughs> All right, this is my gluten sensitivity. Do I need gluten? Do I not need it? It says, you may be able to eat foods containing gluten without experiencing digestive problems. So I'm normal. Yeah. Gluten sensitivity is an adver adverse reaction to gluten, protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. I always questioned what gluten was, but now I got my answer. It is characterized by symptoms that range from abdominal pains, bloating, diarrhea, and constipation to fatigue and joint and muscle pain. Celiac disease, a gluten-related autoimmune disorder, affects 1 in 250 people in the United States and is estimated to be 87% influenced by genetics. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for giving me good genetics. At least with gluten. Carbs. We're not friends anymore. <laughs> I guess I can still talk to you, though. <laughs> All right, so while genetics have been proven to influence gluten sensitivity, the extent that influences is not yet known, so they're still researching that. Lifestyle, dietary, and environmental factors also affect gluten sensitivity, which is why your genetics result may differ from what you've experienced on a day-to-day -day basis. This is talking about my eating behavior. I don't agree with this. One. That's all I'm going to say about that. It says that I am likely to consume more meals and snacks compared to others. I object. I eat normally. I can't even say that seriously. <laughs> I might have a little drink to that. <laughs> it, uh, it is important to understand eating behaviors that drives food choices in order to manage body weights and lower the risk of diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. Eating behavior varies influence. Hold on. Eating behavior varies. Influencing choices such as snacks, overeating, and choosing healthier options. Poor eating, ha poor eating behaviors include overconsumption of food, eating in response to stress. I don't do that. And eating when not hungry. Who would do that? Um, let's say if you don't look at them, they don't see you. So, these behaviors are influenced by environmental, cultural, psychological, and genetic factors. In fact, genetics can influence it 9 to 45% of eating behavior. 
This is all your fault, Mom and Dad. It's really my dad's fault. He likes to smack. All right. Yes, I put the blame on them. I have zero control over this. It's all their fault. <laughs> I can't even say that to be serious. All right. Uh, let's see. The risk of obesity is increased by a variety of common genetic varieties and many of these associated with specific eating behaviors. It's likely, however, the genetic susceptibility towards certain eating behaviors and obesity may be overcome by practicing healthy eating habits. Oh, I could eat healthy too now. I knew I shouldn't have done this. I bad new. All right, so fat metabolism and body weight. Let's see what this one says. How many more do I got? One, two. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to continue going in order. All right, so fat metabolism and body weight. You may lose fat. You may lose less fat in response to low fat diet compared to others. So I got to eat my fats. More fried chicken for me. That's what it means, right? I think that. <sighs> oh man diet is one of the most important factors which factors which in combination with your genetics influence your risk for various diseases including obesity which obviously is some on average individuals in every age category in the United States exceeds the recommended amount of dietary fat intake duh that's what the point of fast food is genetics can influence the extent of which dietary fat intake affects the body consumption by 52%. This explains why two people can consume the same amount of fat and but experience different results. Yeah, well, those people. All right, this is my cholesterol level. Uh-oh, this isn't good. Cholesterol levels. You may have an average risk. Oh, wait, no, that's good. Never mind. I got an average risk, so I am average. I am normal. At least I'm getting some good news. I am normal. So, the average risk of elevated cholesterol. Fortunately, my results have come back positive just about every time. Maybe slightly a little bit above. But it's within reason. All right. Cholesterol plays various roles. Um, I'll let y'all read that. And I'm going to continue on because there's a lot to read. Triglyceride levels. What are... And I am at average risk of that, of elevated triglycerides. That's good. I'm going to let y'all read that one as well. Um, lactose intolerance. Hmm. It says you may be able to eat and drink dairy products without experiencing digestive problems. That's good to know. All right, I'm going to let y'all read that one as well. Now my body weight. It says you may have a higher than desired body weight relative to your height. So it's just telling me that I'm short. That's all it's telling me. I just need to grow. Am I too old to grow? I'm not going to grow no more. <sighs> okay. Well, I guess that, pop, that pity party is over. <laughs> so, um, in the United States, 70.7% .7 of adults are considered to be overweight and obese. Yes, I know that. I can see that. These individuals are at a heightened risk for serious health conditions, which is why I plan to get mine in order. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to go to our exercise traits. And uh, let's see, the blood pressure response to exercises. And it's, exercises may significantly improve my blood pressure. I had no idea. Hmm, go figure. Um, again, there's more to read. I'll let y'all read that. I'm going to continue skipping on. Exercise behavior. You may be likely to exercise less frequently compared to others. Ha! Ah, I don't have to work out every day. Yeah! Right? Isn't that what I mean? But it says I don't have to work out as much. Still means I gotta work out though, right? 
I was really hoping it would say that I didn't have to work out. Blah. Uh, so studies show that one in four um, Americans don't participate in any physical activity on a regular basis. I may or may not be part of that 25%. Not sure. <laughs> so I might need to work out just a little bit more. All right, so my exercise performance type. You may perform well with a mix of endurance and power activities. What does that mean? The different types of exercise emphasize the different elements of the physical fitness. Power activities require maximum force exerted over a short period of time. These exercises such as the bench pressing and sprinting. I'm not bad at sprinting. Yeah, I can hold out for like 30 seconds and then I'm done. So these are designed to increase power, which is uh, the product of both strength and speed. Endurance or aerobic activities increase your breathing heart rate. These activities such as jogging and swimming, I like to swim, although I haven't done it in a while. Keep your heart and lungs and circulatory systems healthy. Oxygen, carbs, and fats are required for endurance activities. Genetics can influence how well your muscles use oxygen and create energy level Creates energy while exercising. Oh man, so I have to work out to get energy? Can I just sleep? <sighs> Differences in exercises behavior can be up to 60% influenced by genetics, which can be used to help determine the best type of exercise for your body. Uh oh. This, oh, this is pretty interesting. So the muscle cramping, it gives me results for that as well. And it says that I am more likely to experience muscle cramps during exercises compared to others. Interesting. I need some wood to knock on before I say anything else. Okay, hold on. One second. This desk is real good, right? Okay. Fortunately, I've never had a muscle cramp during working out. Not that I can think of at least. But that's good to know. I'm more likely, especially since I don't drink as much water as I should. I really don't. I'm surprised. Anyways, muscle strength. I actually agree with this one. It says that my muscles may be more responsive to strength training compared to others. If you haven't seen my body composition video, um, you should go check that one out also because um, based on that one, I actually have a higher muscle, uh, uh, weight of muscle, I guess you would say, uh, muscle mass, excuse me, um, higher muscle mass than the average female. So I can see that one being accurate. Interesting. All right. So weight response to exercise. It says you may lose weight in response to exercise compared to others. Well, that's good to know. Interesting. Now let's see what else is there to learn about me today. It's all about me, all about me, 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 me. All right, so let's see about exercises. We know about the diet. And it says, hmm. It says a suggestive calorie burn per week is about 2,300 calories, which will have me losing about three pounds a month. Kill me? That's not a lot at all. But I want to lose like three pounds an hour. Really? So it just gives me a breakdown of activities that I should do and how many times I should do it a week to get the number of calories. So I'll let y'all skim through that a little bit as I scroll down. All right. Interesting. And of course I can pick and choose which activities I like to do and kind of give me how long I should do it to get my ideal, you know, to burn ideally the calories. That's pretty interesting. All right, so now we're gonna do my supplements on what I need. Hmm. So I need zinc. 
I need a 10 to 15 milligrams of zinc. Oh, and first of all, I need an endorsement from vitamins so that way I can probably consume all these because these are not going to be cheap. All right, so I need 10 to 15 milligrams of zinc, and that'll be for body, for my body weight, my energy, my genetics for my body, and or my body weight, excuse me, and my goals, which includes my body energy level, my family history of my blood sugar. I'm not sure what these mean, so I apologize if it's over your head because I know it's over mine. If you can explain it to me, I would greatly appreciate it. Zinc is considered to be an essential nutrient, which means it must be consumed through diet or supplementation. Other than iron, zinc is the most prevalent mineral in the human body and can be found in every cell. I had no idea. Zinc is essential for growth. Oh, so I can grow. Yes, there's hope for me. <laughs> and plays a role in visual function, which means there's a reason why I'm blind right now. Um, it also helps for wound health, immunity, reproduction, taste sensation. So it's going to change my taste buds again. Oh, man. It'll help with my hearing. Maybe I might be able to listen a little bit more. <laughs> I don't need my smell to be improved. Because apparently that's what it helps with. Um, it also helps with blood clotting as well as insulin, thyroid function. Um, it says zinc can be found in foods such as red meat, poultry, fish, spinach, seeds, garlic, nuts, whole grain egg yolks and leg legumes, legumes, whatever that word is, whatever vegetable or bean that is. I think it's bean. All right. So I also need um, probiotics, um, 10 to 4 billion CFUs. Um, you can see what it helps with for my lifestyle, my genetics, my goals, and my family history, which is allergies, which are this time of year. Um, you can read a little bit more about genetics. And chromium is what I need as well. I don't even know what chromium is. I've never even heard of it. Um, it's a mineral that is best known for blood sugar level regulation. Oh, well. Okay, that makes sense. Um, it is found in whole wheats, meat, broccoli, mushrooms. Mm, I love mushrooms. Like I said, um, it helps with, it's in mushrooms, green beans. I Um, eggs, fish, potatoes. I have a reason to eat potatoes now. Yes. Di um, dairy products and fresh vegetables as well as herbs and spices such as licorice. I've never had licorice. Like natural, true licorice. Um, it it's in horsetail. Why would I eat horsetail? Ew. Yarrow, red clover, nettle, and wild yam. Why not farmed yam? Are there different kinds of those? All right, so then I need some B, some vitamin B complex. I know the doctor told me that the other day. Um, this supplement contains a variety of nutrients in one dose. Let's see, what is it? Can, what can it be found in? Okay, uh, B twelve um, helps produce red blood cells, hemoglobin, hemoglobin, hemoglobin. Why does that sound right? That doesn't sound right. Um, oh, well, you know what I'm talking about. That one, the H word, hemoglobin, hemoglobin. Uh, B vitamins are widely distributed throughout the food supply and can be found in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, breakfast cereals, fortified grains, and grain produce, uh, poultry, and fish. All right, so now we got the CoQ10, apparently is what I need, or the coenzyme 10, which is usually known as CoQ10. Um, let's see. It is prevalent in the highest quantities in the heart, liver, kidneys, and pancreas. It can be found in foods such as beef, herring, chicken, which I eat plenty of, soybean, and canola oil, which I sp all over my popcorn. Rainbow trout, peanuts, sesame seeds, pistachios, and eggs. So basically, according to this so far, I need eggs in my diet. I mean, it's not like I already don't, but apparently I need to eat. I need a flock of chickens to poop me out some eggs. <laughs> Alright, and yes, I already know this. I need to be out in the sun more. I need some more vitamin D. Um, it's playfully known as the sunshine vitamin or vitamin. 
Let's see, what is it found in? Some foods contain vitamin D, include cod liver oil, which I will not be consuming, swordfish, salmon, tuna, orange juice fortified, milk fortified, yogurt fortified, margarine fortified, sardine, sardines, ew, I will not be eating that, liver, beef, eggs, and certain cereals, which are fortified, and Swiss cheese. I guess Swiss cheese is on its own. That's interesting. All right. I need bromelain. Is that last? Nope, that's not last. I need bromamine. Um, let's see. So I need bromelain as well. Ro rotodile, which I've never even heard of. And it'll help with my energy levels. Oh, guess I need more energy. All right, so you've seen the, you know, as I scroll through, you can see the what I need and as far as supplements, get a little more interest in it. And let's see, what else do I need? What else do we get any of those for? I don't know. Let's see. Um, I think I covered it all. No, I do not want to start my supplement plan right now. So, now you guys know a little bit more about me as we both learned my diet, my exercise, my supplemental needs. So, I found this pretty interesting. It'll definitely help me kind of adjust um, my diet and exercising as well as including more supplements that I need in my diet, which some of them I knew about, some of them I didn't know about. Again, everything's taken with a grain of salt. It's not going to be precise because everybody's individual regardless of they have the same similar DNA type as me as well. So again, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, let me know if you learned something new. If you've done this, what are your results? Um, I definitely would love to hear about it. If you have a video, I'll definitely check that one out as well because you know, I like learning about different things and different people and seeing what their results are. So, um, check it out. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me know. I'll check it out. Um, as always, like, subscribe, and comment. And stay jazzy. Thanks for watching.